Hello everybody and welcome to Fatal Set. Today we will delve into advanced techniques for detecting rooted device and also acquiring knowledge on how to bypass such detection methods on the Android platform. Our focus will be on the various techniques employed by the app developers to safeguard their apps and prevent them from running on compromised devices. Now for the learning purpose we are going to use a sample root detection application called root detector. And if you want to follow along this video or you want to do some hands-on exercises then you can download this sample application from our github repo link to which is mentioned in the description box down below. Before getting started it's important to note that these videos are just for education purposes and does not promote any unethical work. So this being said let's get started. So as you can see I have my android device connected with this machine over here and it's not an emulator but a real physical device. All right, uh, but you are free to use emulator as well it's totally up to you as you can see the sample application is already installed in the device and as soon as we launch the application it says the device is rooted that's because the device is indeed rooted using the magisk manager i'm assuming that most of you are already aware about the magisk manager and how to root the android devices so i am not going into that but the advantage of using Magisk Manager for routing is that it comes with pre-installed modules like Jigisk which is very helpful sometimes in bypassing the root detection based on SU binary and SU binary paths and since our device is routed using the Magisk Manager let's quickly first try to bypass these checks using Magisk module so let's open the Magisk Manager application which is here and at the top right corner there is this settings icon we can click on it to go into the settings app section then if we scroll down we have this jigis option right this one and this should be enabled if you want to use this module right so in this case i have it already enabled now in order to utilize this feature we also need to enable this enforce deny list so let's check it and then finally we need to add our app in this configure deny list so if we go into this section we are presented with the list of installed application and we will select the application uh, which in which we are trying to bypass the root so it's this one root detector let's enable this go back and that's all so if our sample application is solely relying on the su binary and su binary paths then this module is sufficient enough to bypass the detection let's see so let's kill the application first and launch it again and it still says root is detected okay this means that the app is checking for some other stuff as well other than just the su binary paths interesting right so now in order to identify what other checks are present in this application we need to start analyzing it and for that let's analyze the java code using the jdx gui tool so i have the tool present in this directory which is re tools jdx then in the bin directory of it i have the executable with the name jdx gui hit enter all right so let's open up the apk file which is this one and it's analyzing it so the analysis is done let's start by looking at the android manifest file to understand what all components are there in the application so if we go into the resources android manifest file uh, we have all the components mentioned here so first of all we can see that it is using some permissions but these are mostly related to the storage then we have the usual main activity defined here uh, with the name main activity as there is nothing else specifically mentioned here so let's start our analysis with this main activity class which is present under com.fatalsec.inappprotections directory this should be present under the source code here is the com package then we have the fatalsec.inappprotections and here we have the main activity all right so just by looking at this activity we can note that it loads a native library in the static block using system.load library api and the name of the library is in app protections right so all the native libraries are located under the lib folder which is present under the resources over here and here's architecture for which the library is built and if we expand this we have the in app protections.so library this means as soon as we launch the application our main activity will be launched and it will load this in-app protections library immediately into the memory but before analyzing this native library let's try to understand what's going on here in this main activity class as we examine this activity we notice the presence of this native method called detect root right 
and it's having a return type as integer this method appear to be responsible for root detection isn't it however if we look into the on create method there is nothing else other than this exception and that's because uh, jdx was unable to decompile this part of the application uh, most probably because of the obfuscation so there is nothing much we can do over here but from the signature of this detect root function it has a integer return type so we can make an assumption that uh, this function is returning either 0 or 1 1 in case root is detected and 0 in case root is not detected or maybe some other constant integer value we don't know yet so to validate this hypothesis we need to intercept the value returned by this function and for this we are going to use freda framework so let's open up our visual studio there we go and create a new java script with the name let's say bypass underscore root dot js okay now to hook the function at java layer we need to first define java dot perform and this basically takes a callback function like this inside this function we can get the instance of our main activity class using java dot use api and here we need to pass the full class path which is com dot dot protections dot main activity right com dot dot in app protections dot main activity let's store this instance into a variable called main activity okay then here we have already seen that inside this main activity class we have this root detect method so we want to provide a custom implementation of this method so for that uh, we can use this main activity variable and access the detect root method uh, using the array index like this so this is the name of the method right and then using this implementation we can provide a custom function like this so just for the sake of better understanding i'm going to put some log on the console which says simply detect root is called okay then we are interested into the return value of this function so for that we need to call the original implementation of this function using this dot detect root okay let's store this into another variable called return and again we can use this console.log function of javascript to print out the logs here we are going to print detect root return value is return and then finally as this detect root methods method is expecting integer so for now let's just simply return what the original function is returning here so return then this return variable okay now whenever detect root method will be triggered from this main activity class our implementation will be called so let's save the script and run it but before that we need to start freda server on our device so going back to the terminal and splitting it into half going into adb shell getting root access and the freda server i have in this directory data local temp dot slash server new all right so now the freda server is running on our device and can go back to visual studio and execute our freda script using freda hyphen u to tell freda to use the device connected via usb then hyphen l to mention the script which is bypass underscore root dot js then hyphen f to forcefully launch a new instance of the application and then uh, the package name of the application which is com dot fatal set dot in app productions right before executing it let's bring our device on the top and hit enter and in the logs we can now see that it says detect root is called and the detect root return value is 639 okay so it's not just zero or one so just to make sure that it's uh, a constant value every time the root is detected let's run the script again and if this time also we will get 639 as the return value we can be sure that whenever the root is detected the application is always returning 639 so we can easily bypass this root detection just by replacing this return value with something else right so exiting this one clear the terminal and launch the script again and this time we got 579 okay unfortunately it seems that 
Manipulating the return value alone is not sufficient to bypass the root detection in this case. Additionally, we have observed in the decompiled code that the code is obfuscated which makes it challenging to understand the underlying logic for root detection solely based on this class. Since JEDX was unable to fully decompile the code, further insights into the detection process are not readily available from this particular class. Hence, we need to look into the native library now where this function is defined, which is this in our productions library. So let's quickly extract this APK using APK tool so that we can get access to these internal files and resources of the application. Okay, going back to the terminal over here, we have this APK, app release dot APK, right? So now using APK tool decompile app release dot APK, hit enter and this will extract the application for us. All right, so we have the extracted APK here in this directory app release and we can get access to the library by going into this decompile directory app release under lib folder then the architecture and if we do ls over here we have this lib in app productions dot so great now to analyze this library we will use the radare to disassembler however feel free to use any other disassembler of your preference such as ghidra or ida if you are more comfortable with those with those tools so to open our library using radare we need to simply pass this library name with r2 command r2 libinap productions.so that's it next we need to analyze this library and for that we need to pass six times a to perform deep analysis hit enter and that was quick okay this means that the library itself is not very big okay let's first of all list out all the functions in this library using afl command nice we don't have too many functions present in this and the first function we can see is our detect root function which is present at this offset so let's quickly navigate to this function using c command let's copy the symbol name and using s then the symbol name we can seek to that offset as you can see now our cursor is pointing to the offset where the detect root function is right then we can look at the disassembly of this function using pdf command okay so the function itself is not so big but if we look at the disassembly we can observe few things first of all there is no direct reference to any of the strings right and also it seems that the function is somewhat obfuscated because there are these indirect branching instructions used here basically this x8 register is dynamically loading at runtime and this subsequent branch instruction will invoke the function based on the value present in this x8 register right so just by looking at this disassembly we cannot say which function is going to be called here and right after this instruction we have a branching instruction uh, which is take branch on non-zero right so most likely this function is going to return either zero or one and based on that um this instruction will decide which path to take and if we observe closely we can see that these instructions are spread throughout this function uh, here also here also we have similar kind of indirect branching instructions right so it's quite difficult here to understand the logic just by simply looking at this function statically okay so we need to start doing the dynamic analysis but for that we need some entry point to start looking into so the very obvious root detection technique which I have mentioned earlier when we were trying to bypass root detection using the magis manager is that in order to detect the root the app sometimes check for the su binary and various system paths where su binary can be present like system bin su so these paths have to be hard coded somewhere in this library right most likely in the read section of the binary because all the hard coded constant values are present in this section only so to search for strings we can use izz command of red array there we go okay what do we have here some symbol names then jago tessie linux paths then some random characters and that's it okay so nothing related to su binary right unfortunately nothing related to su paths have been found in the strings and we can see that a lot of random characters are present in the text section 
this indicates that the strings have been encrypted and stored into the text section so if you want to learn how to decrypt these encrypted strings you can watch the previous video where we have used killing framework to emulate the native library in order to get the decrypted strings link to that video is present in the description box as well as you should be able to access the video using the information link at the top right corner of your screen okay so as a next alternative let's try to see all the imported functions in this library because if the app is looking for su binary paths then it must be accessing the file system right and there are not many functions out there which are responsible for reading and accessing the files from the file system so we can see all the imported functions in radare using i, I command there are some imported functions coming from libc library and we can list some of interesting imported functions responsible for file system handling like f open f close stat and access nice so at this point we can assume that one of these functions have been used to access the su binary path in order to detect whether the device is rooted or not and to validate this let's again use freda to attach the interceptor on these imported functions and see which path these functions are trying to access so going going back to visual studio over here in our script as these are imported functions we are going to create a function with the name hook imported functions okay and in order to attach the hook we have this interceptor dot attach api and this takes two argument first one is the address of the function on which we want to attach the hook in this case since the symbols of the functions are present in the binary such as f open can use module dot find export by name and here we need to tell in which library we are looking for the symbol and we know that these symbols are coming from libc library so we can define that here if you don't know from which library the symbol is coming from you can pass null here okay then the name of the symbol which is f open all right then the second argument is going to be a callback function again and in the callback function we can use on enter attribute so whenever this f open function is called our on enter callback function will be triggered and here we have one argument then the body of this function and here we can print the log as f open then the argument of this f open function which will tell which path this f open function is going to access and if you know the syntax of the f open function the first argument of this function is the file path which we can access using args0 and as we know that the argument of the f open function is of constant character pointer which is equivalent to a string so we can simply read it from the memory using read c string method of freda similarly we can attach the hooks to all other important methods which we have identified so let's copy this piece of code paste it multiple times i think there were four or five imported functions so first one is f open right then second one is going to be stat okay stat in the logs as well let's replace f open with stat and stat also takes file path as the first argument so args0 is okay over here then we have access right so instead of f open we are going to attach hook on the access function right and access function also again takes first argument as file path so this is okay and i think that's it for now so these are the extra ones now we can call this hook imported functions anywhere in this script as it's independent of the java code so we don't need to call it inside java.perform api right let's save the script and run it to see what do we get in the console and launching the freda script and there we go in the logs we can see a lot of files have been accessed and most of them looks like some default paths which normally any app process tries to access while executing the app so to filter out the results and get a better output we need to call this hook function only after our lib in a production library gets loaded to do so we are going to hook linker 64 
as the linker is responsible for loading the library into the memory at first place, right? We can easily find the linker64 module by using process.findModule by name API of Reda. So let me define it at the top over here process.findModule by name. Here we are looking for linker64. Whoops, typo. Process.findModule by name. Okay and this will give us a list of symbols so we can enumerate them using enumerate symbols and then as this is going to be a list of symbols we need to iterate over each one of them to get the addresses of do dl open function and call underscore constructor constructor functions because these function will be called whenever linker tries to load a library into the memory so to iterate we are going to use for each loop function this will take an argument as symbol that the body of this function right so here uh, this for each loop will start iterating one by one over each symbol which we will get into this argument but as already mentioned we are looking for do dl open and call underscore constructors so we need to filter these two symbols using if symbol dot name so if the symbol name contains do dl open then simply we are going to store it into a do dl open variable like this so symbol dot address will give us the address of this particular symbol as this is not defined we can define this variable at the top and initialize it with null initially similarly we need our call underscore constructors variable right and here another condition for our call underscore constructor so if symbol dot name is call underscore construct greater than equal to zero then in the call underscore constructor variable we are going to store the address of this symbol once we have these addresses we can attach the hooks and trace all the libraries being loaded by the linker to do so let attach our hook using interceptor dot attach then we need to pass the address where we want this interceptor to be attached and that is to underscore dl open right then the callback function and this do dl open functions first argument is the name of the library or the path of the library which is going to be loaded into the memory by the linker so this we can extract using this dot context dot x zero as it's in a string form so we can directly read it using read c string method let's store it into a variable called library underscore path like this okay since we are looking uh, only for the lib in app protections library and don't want to print everything so we can filter that out using this if condition of a library path is having lib in app protections dot so then only we are going to attach all other hooks right so now inside this we need to make another interceptor dot attach on call underscore constructor and that's because at this point of time when do dl open method is called by the linker the library is not fully loaded into the memory it's being loaded into the memory so the address is not known at this point of time that's why we need to attach another interceptor at this call underscore constructor because this will be called only after the library is fully loaded into the memory okay again here we are going to have our callback function like this and sometimes what linker does is it loads the library multiple times into the memory so to avoid additional overhead let's create a variable called lib loaded and initialize it with zero so this will tell us whether the library is already loaded into the memory or not so at this point it's not loaded but inside the call constructor we can check if this library loaded variable is zero then this means that the library is being loaded for the first time and we can extract out the object for this loaded library and store it into this native mod variable using process.find module by name here the name is going to be the name of the library which is lib in app protections dot so and print it in the log in app protections library is loaded 
and actually we can get the base address where the library is loaded using this native mod native mod dot base okay and here let's initialize this lib library loaded variable with one now we can call this hook imported function method here only so this will make sure that all the hooks of our imported functions will be triggered only after this in-app productions library is loaded so let's save the script and exit this process clear out the terminal and launch the script again nice so it worked and in the output we can see that there are not many logs as compared to before right and now let's examine this output so here we can see that in app library protections is loaded at this address fine and then let's try to look for the detect root function so here we have a detect root method which is triggered and right after that uh, we have these access functions being called with some su binary paths this means that the application is using this access function to look for the su binary paths in order to detect the root then immediately after accessing these paths the function is returning the integer value as 570 so now the question is how can we bypass this one thing we can try is to alter this path and provide some fake path instead this will make the app to think that this su binary path is not present and app should return as non-rooted so to do that let's go back to the fida script and inside this hook imported functions since access function is responsible inside this access receptor what we can do is to check if this particular argument is having su binary then only we can modify this path so in order to modify the argument what we can do is to use write function which in this case is going to be write utf8 string and here instead of passing the su binary path we can pass anything such as don't exist all right now what will happen whenever this access method is called our interceptor will be triggered and it will check whether the first argument of this access function is having su binary at the end and if that is the case then it will replace this first argument with this file path which basically is a non-existing -exist one and make the x function to return error code let's save the script and run it again but before that we need to exit from the previous running process and clear out the terminal now launching the script again and it says type error not a function at line 54 okay i forgot to add uh, round brackets here launching the script again hit enter and this time we can observe that access function is now trying to access our modified non-existent path instead of the su paths right but still uh, in the app it says root is detected this is because the app is looking for some other checks as well instead of just su paths so we have to look for all the possible ways in which an android app can detect the presence of root all right so coming back to the output log we can observe that before returning the value it is calling a new function called stat function which is trying to access this se linux path so if you don't know what this se linux is so as a part of android security model android uses this se linux to enforce mandatory access control over all the processes so whenever we root the device these policies will be altered based on this knowledge we can assume that the app is trying to access these su linux policy to detect root now there could be multiple ways to detect whether the SE Linux policy is modified or not such as by checking the timestamp when this file is modified but if the implementation is poor then we would be able to bypass this just by providing a fake non-existent path just like what we did with access function call so again coming back to the script this time into our stat hook inside on enter we are going to look for for this sc linux file path right so if the first argument of this stat function is having sc linux then we are simply going to override this file path with a non-existent one let's say non-existing okay let's save the script and run it again okay the app still shows the device is rooted 
and in the output log we have some issue it says access violation when trying to access this memory location this is at line 49 which is when we are trying to override the first argument of this step function okay so this might happen because the memory location is not writable but nothing to worry about because freda has a solution for this there is a memory dot protect api provided by freda using which we can manipulate the permissions of any memory region of the process so let's add this and change the protection to read write and execute right before we override the value so using memory dot protect then this api basically takes two three arguments first one is the memory address of where we want to change the permissions and that is args0 then the size of the memory location uh, which we can get dynamically using process dot pointer size so if we have a 64 bit system then the pointer size is going to be 64 bits long and then the third argument is going to be the permissions which in this case we are going to provide as read write and execute let's save this script now and run it again to see whether this resolves the issue or not and in the output console we don't see any errors which means it worked nice and also we can observe that these stat arguments are now replaced with the non-existing one and earlier we have observed that only one stat function was called but this time there are four stat functions called this means that the application is looking for several sc linux paths and not just one and uh, we have managed to bypass this check but still the app is saying that the root is detected and that is because if we notice right before returning from this detect root function we have now another new imported function which is triggered that is f open and it is trying to access this proc self attribute previous file path okay so as of now we don't know what's going on inside this proc self attr slash prep file but if this is something related to root detection then we can have a look at this file by getting a shell access to the device via adb shell command and looking at the contents of this file so let's open a new instance of the terminal then using adb shell command we can get the shell access getting the root access and then here this self will be replaced with the process id of the running application so we need to know in order to print the contents of this file what's the process id of this application which we can easily get using ps hyphen a command and to filter out the results we can use grep hyphen i and then the package name which is fatal sec in this case there we go so here is the process id of this application and now using cat command we can easily print out the contents of this file slash proc slash two nine eight six six slash attr slash prev enter go here are the contents of this file which says u colon r colon zygote colon s0 okay and you can repeat the same exercise on a non-rooted device and if you will compare the results of the same file on a rooted one and the one with the non-rooted one uh, you will see a significant difference in the output so on a non-rooted device which is not running the magisk manager application uh, having jigesk module enabled instead of this jigot you will get untrusted application or something else okay here this jigot indicates that the jigesk module is running and most probably that's what the application is detecting over here now one way to bypass this check is to disable the jigesk module from the magisk manager application and reboot the device and that should eventually bypass this detection but since we have the power of freda we are going to bypass this using Frida itself. So based on this understanding, we can assume that at some point of time, the application after accessing this file uh, must be doing a comparison with this JIGOAT string. So if we go back into Radare terminal and look into the string section, if you remember from the earlier output, there we saw this JIGOAT string present in the read only data section of the binary so this indicates that indeed, indeed there is something uh, going on with this jigot string and we need to figure out the function responsible for doing this string comparison and if we come back to the imported functions from this list there is only one function which is responsible for the comparison of the strings which is this str str function so let's attach our frida script to this str str function and see and intercept the argument of it 
as it's an imported function we can call the interceptor dot attach attach api in this hook imported functions itself so instead of writing uh, everything from scratch let's copy this code snippet and at the end of it we can paste it and instead of f open we will mention str str and in the log itself we will mention str str now this function uh, basically takes two argument one is the haystack which is the complete string and the other one is we can call the needle which is the sub string uh, this function looks for from the main string so let's print out both of these arguments str str and then haystack is going to be the first argument which we can access with index 0 and similarly the second argument we can call it as needle this we can access via args one dot read c string okay we can save the script now and run it again to see what do we get in the output let's clear the terminal first launch the script again hit enter do, 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 do. we can see in the output console there is a lot of going on with the str str function so let's scroll back a bit where our detect root function is triggered which is here detect root is called right and as we have anticipated right after f open function this str str function is triggered and in the haystack it's accessing the content of this pref file which we just saw in the adb shell terminal and then in the needle it's containing the jigot string and hard coded in the binary so if the jigot string is present in this string then this function will return true otherwise false and based on that the application is detecting whether digest module is enabled or not right so to bypass this let's modify this second argument so that the comparison will fail and that should eventually bypass this check so as we did previously with the access and stat function calls in this str str function inside on enter we can put the if condition so if args1 if the first argument is having zygote then only we will replace it with some other random string and we have this write utf8 string method present in frida to overwrite or to simply write the string to any memory address so let's use that and here instead of zygote let's put anything let's say blah blah okay save the script and run it again so what do we get now in the app it still detects the root okay and in the console there we go here is the detect root is called and here in the str str function the second argument is now blah blah okay but the app is still not convinced it's still detecting the root so looks like the app is having a very good level of protection but we are not also not giving up let's see what do we get now right after this str str function call so after this str str function call we are now getting another imported function call which is f open and it's trying to access mount info file all right so if you are not aware already when we have a rooted device in the mount info file lot of additional paths were mounted such as for magisk and mounted paths such as slash system slash data which are supposed to be readable only so it is possible that the app is trying to look for these signals right so one way to look for these changes is using the str str function and another option we have is to point the f open function to a non-existent path but let's try to go with the first approach and see what do we get so as we already have hook attached on this str str function uh, we just need to observe the output and right after this f open we already see a call made to this str str function and here it is comparing in the haystack we are getting this long string showing the read only section ext4 partition and in the middle it's checking for magisk all right it's reading this mount info file line by line so this is the first line and if this line contains magisk then basically the app will detect it as rooted similarly um, in the next line it is doing the same comparison and this is going on until uh, it finds the magisk and right after that our root detect function is returning okay so let's bypass this using the same approach as we used earlier modifying the second argument of this str str function so again we can put a if condition and this time instead of jigot if magisk is there then we will replace it with some other string and this should be sufficient to bypass this check so let's save the script and run it again ah, but still something is left which is making the app think that the device is still rooted and if we trace the output console again 
here we see that this time uh, it's accessing a lot of lines from the mount info file and then it's returning from the detect root method so there is nothing else uh, this detect root method is checking since there are no more references being made to any of the imported functions we need to go back to the radar terminal and try to analyze uh, the library further to find any other low hanging fruits okay so in the string section we don't have anything else which seems to be suspicious okay next let's try to analyze the list of functions which we have over here so other than the imported symbols uh, we do have these subroutines right so let's try to analyze them randomly let's see what do we have in this subroutine so seeking to this offset what okay, so seeking to this offset analyze the disassembly let's see what do we have here it seems like this particular subroutine is trying to access these SC Linux file paths. Okay, so we can say that this subroutine might be responsible for the check we have earlier. But as we have already bypassed this check, let's move on to some other subroutine. Let's see what do we have in this one. So seeking to this offset, analyzing the disassembly. Okay, this is a small function and it's not revealing anything sensitive. So this time let's go with this one and what do we have so there are no references made to any of the string okay then other than that nothing else okay let's see what do we have in this subroutine this looks like an interesting one okay it seems that this subroutine is trying to access the open to function uh, but due to string encryption we cannot figure out statically which file it's trying to open here so moving on into the disassembly we can observe that there are a couple of supervisor instructions present which is svc zero instructions and these instructions are used to call functions using system call numbers so this is a good and stealthy way to hide the actual implementation of the function so just by looking at this disassembly uh, we cannot say which function is going to be called here but before moving on let's try to understand how the system calls work since we are dealing with arm64 based binary let's open the system call mapping table for this architecture which i have already opened in the browser so you can access this link in order to get the same table and here basically uh, all the system call listing is available for all different architectures but we are interested only in ARM64 one so in the first column we can see the name of the function which the system call will make then in the third column we have the system call number and this number will be stored in the x8 register as specified here and then the arguments will be stored in the registers starting from x0 all right so based on this information let's try to analyze the disassembly again so we now know that in x8 register our system call number is stored so just before this svc instruction we have this move w8 instruction present which is basically storing uh, 0x38 into this w8 register right so we can match this system call number in the table we just saw in order to figure out which function is going to be called with this svc instruction so hex 38 Da, 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 da. here is our hex 38 system call number and it is equivalent to open at function and this function is very much similar to open function which will open the file into the memory for reading or writing purpose so this is a good candidate to look for and developer often use such techniques to hide the actual function names from being analyzed statically so there is not just one but couple of different svc instructions which are calling uh, the same hex 38 system call number right but in large binaries having a lot of svc instructions it's not possible to analyze each one of them manually like this which we just did and that's where radar 2 commands come into play so instead of looking into all these svc instructions and trying to figure out which function is going to be called here uh, we have this slash as command which will search for all the svc instructions present in the binary and automatically map it along the system call mapping table which radare have in its database but before that we need to properly configure the environment variables and as of now in this version of radare i am having there is no direct mapping for arm64 architecture for the system calls and that's why uh, we can change the os to linux 
enter and now if we run slash as command we got the output these are the offsets where the svc instruction is present and these are the equivalent function names nice isn't it so in this library we have these five svc instruction present at these offsets so now we can try to intercept these supervisor calls and see which files these open at functions are trying to access going back to visual studio this time let's create a new function and name it as hook svc because this time we are going to attach the interceptor directly at the offset we need to convert that offset into the equivalent address in the memory we need base address here so let's take it as the argument and this base address we already have calculated here using this native mod variable right so inside this let's call our interceptor dot attach api and now in the first argument let's pass the offset and add it to the base address of the library so the first offset we have is this one copy and paste then the second argument is going to be the callback function as usual so here we are going to have the path which we can access via x one register right if you remember from this table the arguments are going to be stored in the registers and for open at the file name is going to be stored in x1 register right so that's why i can get into the file path using x1 register and reading it as a read c string nice and let's simply print it out in the console as we see instruction is going to be called and then we will print the path okay let's copy this particular code snippet and paste it five times because our open it function is getting called five times in the test assembly and now all we need to do is replace these offsets copy paste copy paste copy paste copy and paste now we need to call this hook as we see function in the linker where we are calculating the base address right so hook svc and we need to pass the base address you can save the script now and let's try to run it and see what do we get this time we can observe here that right after these str str function calls which we bypassed earlier uh, we are getting these svc instruction calls nice and these are trying to access the su binary paths that's it this means we can bypass this using the same technique as before that is passing a non-existent path in the x1 register instead of this su binary path right so let's quickly do that in the hook svc function here if or in fact we don't need the filter but to modify the contents of this x1 register again what we did earlier accessing the register using this dot context dot x1 dot write utf8 string and here we can put any path which is not existing and we can copy and paste this in all of these interceptors we can now save the script and execute it again in order to see whether uh, these checks are bypassed or not all right so the app is not complaining anymore and it's saying that the device environment is clean and yes finally we have managed to bypass all these checks i hope you liked it and if there are any feedbacks or comments do let me know down below in the comment section also don't forget to subscribe to the channel and i will see you in the next video very soon